Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. Uh, this is the part 2 video of the topic SAP Archiving. So in the part 1 video we have learned about the configuration part of SAP Archiving. So what should be done prior to archiving the configuration which is required to be done prior to archiving. Now this is part 2. We will learn about the actual archiving process. So the T code SARA SARA is used for archiving. We start the actual archiving process using the transaction code SARA. Okay. This is the initial screen of the T code SARA. Okay. We have the object name and different actions. Now when we talk about archiving, okay, so it's done based on the object name. Okay. Uh, say like IDOC, if we take IDOC, we have three different tables for IDOC, the IDOC header table, okay, then the control table, the status table and the actual data, the IDOC data table, okay. So we have EDIDC, EDIDS and EDI40, we have three different tables. So when we archive this particular IDOC, okay. The, the control structure that is the header, the status and the actual IDOC data are in three different tables. So it is meaningless to archive only one table related to IDOC. If we want to archive, we have to archive all these three tables. Right. So that's why we archive based on the object name. Okay. So for IDOC, the object name is IDOC. Okay, similarly for material master, we have a different name. Sales document, we have a different name. Now, because and why the archive based on this particular object name is later when we want to retrieve the data for viewing, okay, it doesn't make any sense if we get only one part of the data which we want. Okay, see the all the IDOC tables are related to each other. They have some relationships. Okay. So, when you want to view an IDOC, IDOC is a business. It's from a business point of view. Internally, it fetches the data from three different tables. So, you have to get the data from all three tables. Not one table. So, that's why we archive based on the object name. And these are the different actions like write, delete, read, the storage system and the management. Okay. So this is the initial screen of archive administration. Now every application area will have some specific archiving objects associated with them. For example, the archiving object for material master is mm underscore mat nr. Okay. For material master the object name is mm underscore matnav so you enter that object name here okay so you have to enter the concerned object archiving object name in the object name field so here we enter it then you click on the customizing button on the application toolbar so you have to click this customizing button this is the screen we get so we have the object name here now select the logical file name that you had created from the drop down box so we have created the logical file name the physical file name the logical path and the physical path in the file and the sf01 t codes so we have to select whatever file name we want for this object okay then the others are generally default like the maximum size and we have to create the variants okay variants are nothing but it's the actual data which has to be archived we have a test variant and a production variant and the jobs okay whether they are scheduled right now or you just you schedule it now and release it later or whatever it is in the content repository so it's nothing but the actual archiving storage system okay and then the sequence it's either delete before storing or stored before 
deleting we have two options what is archiving the data from the database is first copied in form of files on the operating system of the SAP server okay and these files are stored onto the archiving device and then deleted from the database so first either you can delete and then store or you store onto the archive device first and then delete from the database okay so we have two options delete before store or store before deleting we'll choose whatever we want okay so here this logical file name is important the variance you have to mention and the others it can be left as default so in the initial screen we'll give the object name we go to customize it we come here now so you select the logical file name that you have created from the top bound box after specifying the logical file name save icon then you click the back icon to return to the initial screen okay so after this logical file name you come again to the screen so from here you choose it you come back to the screen now we have to create the variants so you go to this button variant okay so you can create a test variant as well as the actual run that is the production mode variant now we come here then this is the initial screen for variant you can give a variant name a username and you can say maintain okay you click on this maintain button a sub screen will appear to specify a variant name and the material to be archived and click on the create icon give the variant name here username you go to maintain then it will, it will take you to the screen okay where you will actually give the input of the material master or whatever it is which has to be a guy okay because we have selected the object name as material master records so the variant automatically points you to that object selection of materials you give the material number here and you save it okay now next click on the start date button and then this pool parents button specify the period and the start time for the execution of archiving process now the traffic light buttons next to the start date and spool params button should have turned green so you go to the start date and the spool params button start date is nothing but when you want to schedule the job and spool parameters means whether you want to email it the result of the job or you want to print it to a device whatever it is okay so these two have to be mentioned here now so once you give them they will turn green okay then you click on the job overview button to check the status of this in this button so depending upon whether you have scheduled that job right now or later whatever it is you go to this job overview button and you monitor the jobs okay so this part is about archiving okay you first you specify the object name go to customizing okay give the relevant file name logical file name variant names create the variants okay and the other options like the delete jobs okay so first we have only scheduled the archiving but the delete job will schedule next so that's why it is not scheduled then the the place file in the storage system archiving system site okay then the sequence store before delete or delete before storing whatever it is then we create the variants both the variants test and the actual run okay so in the variant we give the actual input the object ids which have to be archived but um, if this object is material master so we are giving the material numbers if it's idoc then we'll get idoc numbers here we have to input the idoc numbers if it's a sales document we have to give the sales document number then you give the start date and the spool parameters okay and you save it so whenever you schedule the jobs at time you schedule the jobs they'll run accordingly and you can monitor them using this job this option job okay so now we have archived 
the data. The next step is the deletion in the database. Okay, so the archiving part is over. You have to delete it now. So now you go to the delete button on the screen. Okay, this screen you go to this delete button. So it will take you to the screen archive administration execute delete program. So you give the username. Okay, whether it's a test here also you have an option for the test mode. Here you go to this archive selection button this button now you will get a list of archive data you select the archive data for deletion from the database so here whatever data is archived only that will be listed okay because first step in archiving is you have to archive the data then only it will be deleted so you'll get the list of data which is already archived you click on the enter icon, maintain the start date and this pull parameter and click on execute. So here you give the start date and the spool parameters. You give both the options here. Okay. So see, once you have go to the, went to this archive selection, it will take you to the screen. So you can select this and here it's displaying the message that archiving is complete. Without completing the archiving part, we should not delete the data at any cost okay so only the data which was archived successfully is to be deleted so you select the archive data then you maintain this start date and the spool parameters okay and you execute it so then also you can go to this job overview button and you can check the status of the delete job okay so this this part is about deletion first archive now delete now let us convert the creation of archive file how can we cross check that archiving is done the file has to be created at the host level so you log on to the unix level or in windows whatever it is and you check the same under the path sap mnt sid so here I'm just giving an example like this is my uh, large, uh, physical path name where I have set up, set up in file but whatever uh, path we have configured in file we have to go to that path and we do a display lsi and rt to get the list of the files which are archived so here see rmm number if we remember in the last video, video where we have learned about the file we have defined the logical file name also okay so it was rmm timestamp that's why okay so the file is created now understood so the cross checking means just go to the directory and check whether the file is created or not after the archiving job was completed successfully now as a final step check whether the material was deleted or not now archiving part is over now our main intention is to delete the data from the database right so you execute the transaction code mmc02 to display the material it's very simple now we have archived the material master data so you go to mmc02 and you check if that material is present or not after the deletion job is over so we get a message that the material does not exist so after the deletion job so after the deletion job completed successfully if we check whatever object it is for idocs we can check in we for material master we check in mm02 so we will get a message that the material is not or the idoc or whatever object it is it's not existing anymore okay so this is about archiving so first the the sole decode for archiving is sara object name and the different actions first you give the object name and proceed whether it's write delete this this read in the next video we will see how to read the data which is archive okay so this read option we'll check in the next video 
this the other things which we can maintain here is the storage system the details about that archiving storage system and the other management now so first you give the object name then you go to this customizing you maintain the details the important thing is you have to select the correct logical path okay and the variance the data variant contains the data which has to be archived so we have to be very careful about that see once data is archived you can only view it you can't modify it so while setting up the variance of archiving we should be careful if you have archived something which has to be modified then then we have some loss of data okay you once you archive the data you will be only be able to view it no more modifications will be possible so we have to be very careful while setting up the variance also okay this variance screen we have to give this information correctly here okay so generally the old data is archived say like 90 days back data is archived or sometimes 120 days back data is archived and the tables are growing at a fast rate okay so with that we complete the archiving part then we go for deletion here uh, we do the selection that is the data which is already archived will be displayed so you select it and then you proceed for deletion we schedule the jobs and confirmation you have to check whether the archive file is created in the respective directory at the OS level and for deletion in SAP we check whether that object is existing or not okay so this is about a brief overview about the SARAT code okay this is the transaction where archiving is scheduled okay so this is you know doing step by step we have some jobs also okay so uh, instead of going to SARAT code and scheduling these jobs we have some program names also but the right job the delete job so generally in production systems those jobs are scheduled okay you have to only set up the variant in that variant will again for sara write and delete have respective programs okay so those you uh, just schedule those uh, programs from sm36 you create the variants and schedule them from sm36 okay so that is about uh, the sara thank you